the company is called Acagen. It's a company focused in infectious disease, specifically with antibiotics, multi-drug resistance antibiotics. So our lead product was approved in the middle of this year called Zendry. It's for complicated urinary tract infections. Uh, we launched it in July, and we have other antibiotic products in the pipeline. So I'd encourage attendees and, and individuals who are looking at an outsourcing relationship to really be planned and purposeful about what type of a relationship you want to create. There's all different models and approaches that you can take, whether you're a large company or a small company, and so really be thoughtful how engaged you want to be with your CMO, what type of a relationship you want to set up front, and realize that the implications of how you set that up in the beginning will have a long-term impact in terms of how that relationship will play out in terms of your structure, your setup, and and the resulting outcome you'll get from that relationship. Yeah, I think that modernization is one of the trends that are kind of interwoven in my talk. And I, I would say, arguably, the biggest motivation they have is just the changing regulatory landscape and the increasing pressures that are coming from the health authorities. Specifically, um, there is an increase in the presence of FDA Warning letters, complete response letters, and I think that in itself is somewhat retrospectively or retroactively providing motivation for CMOs to stay modern and stay current and kind of really encapsulate the C and the C GMPs and, and stay modern. I think that's probably the biggest motivation that I would argue is in place. Uh, it's more of a stick than the carrot. I would say on the, the carrot side of things, of course, there's the benefits of cost reduction and competitive pressures that really help motivate the CMOs in the small molecule space to start to, modern, to start to modernize. Yeah, I think the, the best way to serve the customers is to really form that tight partnership and have that rapport and, and be understanding of the situation. So I think it starts with transparency on both sides of the equation of what are the constraints that the CMO is facing as well as what are the needs of the partner up front. And, and I think if you establish that relationship early on and then really work in a very lockstep type of a way, that that's the best way to serve us. All too often, I feel like it's a reactive type of a mindset where the, the manufacturer or the, the license holder wants something and the CDMO isn't able to react and vice versa. The CM, CDMO needs something and the license holder isn't in a position to accommodate that. And so I think the best way to really, the best service they can do to us is really have that strong partnership and to be supportive of the needs of both parties. I mean, I think it starts, the speed to market part of the equation really starts up front with setting up the relationship to begin with. I think if after the fact you decide that speed to market is critical and you've already formed a relationship, you're, you're really in a very disadvantaged position. I think the best way to do that up front is to kind of, again, set the expectations of what is most important, what does speed to market look like, what are the constraints that you're operating under, what timelines are you being forced to deliver upon. And so if you set that expectation up front, then you can allocate the time, the resources, or the capacity to enable whatever the flexibility is needed to achieve speed to market. So to me, it's really about upfront setting the relationship and being transparent throughout the, the development and the transfer of your product, as well as the kind of getting ready to bring it to market. Yeah, I think innovation, especially in this small molecule landscape, is probably one of the bigger, more challenging trends to navigate through. It's, it's one of those things that in an ideal, unconstrained world, we'd all want to get there. But I think the reality of it is there has to be particular motivation to make that happen. So in, in our case, the, the easiest and most productive way to drive innovation is through really new therapeutic areas or new mo modalities or new technologies. And I think that's the, the biggest attraction, because if you're a CDMO, the, the way you'd innovate is with some incentive to innovate. So what do they get out of it? Whether it's they develop new technology, whether they get to participate in a new therapeutic trend like gene therapy or cancer immunotherapy or something to that extent. So that's the easiest way to drive innovation is to have some incentive at the end of it. And then of course the other way is through the structuring of the deal. So if the, the deal is structured in a way that both parties benefit through the innovation, then that's certainly a way to help drive and provide that motivation for innovation at a CDMO. The, the direction of it is, I, I wish in my, uh, that I had a crystal ball to really predict and project where it's going. I, I do think it's probably going to a more small, customized model. I think historically, consistent with the trends of the pharmaceutical industry, you were talking about large volume products with large patient populations, but obviously with the advent of personalized medicine and other type of newer gene therapy technologies, I think the CDMO market needs to move in that same direction to kind of capture that market share. So I think 
more smaller, more customizable type of approaches is the direction that I would foresee, especially in the landscape that we look at for CDMOs, rather than the one size fits all slot into my existing technology type of approach where a lot of the CDMOs play these days. So far, so good. It's uh, still in the early days of my experience. This is my, my first time attending the conference. I've enjoyed seeing the few speakers that I've seen this morning, uh, as well as just seeing the list of delegates. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about what the uh, agenda has in store for the rest of the conference. Thank you.